If you were on social media or if you turned on the TV yesterday, you probably heard someone somewhere talking about the passing of ESPN broadcaster Stuart Scott. But I know very few people knew him like you did, Kev. Yeah, he was a buddy. Um, he was a groundbreaking broadcaster, one of the best in the business ever. But I was lucky enough to work with Stu for two years, but more importantly, we were friends for more than 20 years. We grew up in this business together, shared an agent, some heartache, and a lot of great times. We were like a little family navigating through life and television. And I got to tell you, it was one amazing ride. You got game? I always got game. Stu had game and a lot of fight in him. He battled against cancer, staying strong for his two daughters, Taylor and Sydney. He told me just last year that our good friend Robin Roberts' own survival story also kept him going. One of my biggest inspirations of my life after battling this thing is and was her. I want to be like her. I want my daughters to be like her. That night when Stuart was honored at the ESPYs, he told us quitting was just not going to happen. Sometimes when I'm down, I'm like, I don't know if I can do it anymore. But you get up and you do it. You just do, like you don't have a choice. I mean, think about it, what, what choice do you have? Rich Eisen was Stu's partner at ESPN. He was actually on the air at the NFL Network when he found out his friend had passed away. I love you, Stuart. Wherever you are, Godspeed. I just spoke from the heart. Stuart would be sitting there going, you're, you're not gonna script something, are you? I mean, you just, just talk. And I want everyone to see a bit of Stu's funny side. Here, he tried to bust me at the Super Bowl when I asked him if he did a bit of partying. Tell me about Miami and how much fun is it? This party's always one of the best parties of the year. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't really know about, you know, parties because, you know, we're here, like, you know, covering the Super Bowl for Sports Center, and, you know, we do, we do Sports Center, and then after that, I go back to the hotel and, and study some more. Uh, sometimes I'll go to the local library. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll go to church. <laughs> And, uh, you know, get, get night's sleep so uh, we can go back and do some more. It, it's Miami. Oh, this is Miami. Miami. You're in Miami. Yeah. Didn't even realize. I've been working so hard. <laughs> and that's the story we told everybody. Um, there are three things I want to say about Stu. First, his eyesight was horrible, and it was a nightmare to play golf with him because you had to watch his ball and your ball. But on the set, despite that bad vision, he was so good and so prepared that he could do an entire show, highlights and all, even if he couldn't see the prompter. Um, Here's a harsh truth. Behind the scenes, it was never easy for Stu. Even inside the building at ESPN initially, there were people who were resistant to what he did. And the hateful messages and calls he used to get from people outside the building was something that I will never forget. And somehow, he dealt with that. And lastly, Stu could have gone other places. He could have moved on besides ESPN, made more money. And we talked about it a lot. But at the end of the day, he never wanted to be away from his daughters. He was a father first and also a great friend. He will be missed dearly.